All right, guys, uh, welcome back. This is part two. And so um, I want to delve right into uh, Robert Peel's principle number seven. Uh, and this, again, uh, has to do with unity between the police and the public. And Robert Peel believed that the police at all times should maintain a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and the public are the police. The police are only members of the public who are paid to give full-time attention to duties which are incumbent on every citizen in the interest of community welfare. So this is really, I think, a very critical uh, concept that he developed um, considering the time period. And, and that is that, you know, it is, it is very profound that the police are the public and the public are the police. So it further redefines that uh, unity, that need of cooperation, um, that my role, for example, as a police officer is to safeguard our community and to work with you on ways that we can maintain a relationship uh, and work together for a crime-free and um, well-preserved uh, community. So. You know, that function is more so today. I think we see it a lot in a lot of the community policing philosophy that has been developed over the years in terms of our relationship with the public as we go about performing our day-to-day -day duties. But there needs to be that relationship, at least on the part of the police officer and the community as well, but on the police officer that they are part of the community, that their job is to try to make the communities a safe place uh, through their actions and, and the assistant of the community to uh, develop strategies that might uh, resolve issues within one specific community neighborhood or, or another. All right, so very important that we maintain uh, that relationship with the public. Um, this has come to light recently with the whole issue of immigration enforcement, the role of local police. Um, many police chiefs believe that if the perception is that the local police are too involved in immigration enforcement, then we will lose that connection with the community that, that is essential, especially with those communities that has a significant uh, population uh, that might have um, somehow uh, be here illegally. And we need to maintain that relationship so that we can continue to do what we do in terms of crime control. All right, so again, that unity, that need to create that, um, that relationship is, is essential. Uh, next principle is number eight, which he talks about polices are not judges. The police should always direct their actions toward their functions and never appear to usurp the power of the judiciary by avenging individuals or the state or authoritatively judging guilt or punishing the guilty. Um, and this may have been more so because of the time period in which this was uh, drafted. Uh, remember, people were still apprehensive about establishing a police force um, as an arm of the government. They believed that there might be a sense of repression or that the police might be used as spies uh, against the public, uh, something to that effect. So I think Peel wanted to make sure that the public understood that, you know, um, our job is not to judge. You know, if a person violates the law, we believe that they violate the law and by statute we can arrest them. Our job is to do just that. And it's the job of the other branches of government to determine whether or not that person is in fact guilty and then obviously hand down the punishment. But I think much of what he wrote about here may have been uh, at the time, uh, at the time period and he was uh, wanting to develop a way to make sure that the public understood what the role of the police was and was not. Uh, but anyhow, the police are not judges. And that's not our job. Our job is to arrest those who violate the law based on statute and then forward, uh, uh, you know, uh, our, our reports and or uh, the arrestee to the, to the proper courts for adjudication. The test of mission success. This is principle number nine. And he states that the test of police efficiency is the absence of crime and disorder not the visible evidence of police action in dealing with them. So the true test is the absence of crime and disorder. And this is very profound because every year the FBI puts out these crime stats. 
And oftentimes, police departments are based on those crime stats. In other words, if we are doing a good job, then crime should be diminishing. Uh, we should have less disorder. If we're not doing an efficient job, then maybe there's crime on the increase, uh, or maybe there is more disorder. Um, so this is this is in part a, an interesting uh, proposal, um, but I think what's missing in this particular uh, principle is the fact that there's so many things that relate to crimes that are out of the control of the police. Uh, for example, uh, when you when you try to think about what causes crime. So one might say, well, um, unemployment causes crime, or uh, single parent households cause crime, or poverty causes crime. Uh, and all of these uh, may contribute to some level or another crime. But then I can ask you how many, how much of those issues do you think police have the ability to control? In other words, an officer out there driving around, pushing his black and white every day, you know, how can he uh, determine employment? How can he, you know, create jobs? Uh, and the reality of it is he can't. And so the police officers have to deal with society and uh, the, the level of employment, unemployment, level of poverty, level of single family households, if you think these cause crime. Um, so, you know, as a measure of success, yes, we do evaluate it in terms of crime. We continue to look at crime statistics uh, as a means to measure success uh, and the level of disorder that exists in a community. Um, some of these things, when you look at, for example, the level of disorder um, is, is what we look at when we do community, community policing projects. We're trying to reduce the level of social decay, social disorder uh, associated with certain segments, uh, certain areas of our community. And so, um, you know, those are things we try to look at and, and try to change. Uh, but we have to have measurements. So there's so many different measurements in terms of police mission and success. Sometimes you look at response time. Sometimes you look at crime trends. Sometimes you look at reduction in crime. Uh, reduction in fatal accidents, reduction in injury accidents to determine whether our traffic enforcement program is effective. Uh, those type of things. But I think what's important here is that um, I think people recognize the need that law enforcement needs to develop a criteria, something that we can evaluate to determine whether or not we're being effective or whether or not we're being ineffective in our crime fighting strategies. And so often that's what takes place. I mean, just because um, you implement a program and it doesn't work doesn't mean it's a failure. It means we need to figure out what we need to do to fix it to achieve the specific results we're looking for. So maybe you're trying to reduce uh, your fatal traffic accidents or something to that effect. And maybe you do a program and your accidents really don't go down. So you try a different strategy. So it's not necessarily a failure. It just means that particular strategy didn't work. Um, so we do use different types of tools and methods to evaluate how we're doing. Um, but understand that, you know, there are certain things that happen in society that police can't control. And some of those things may or may not lead to more crime. And so uh, the reality is police often have to deal with that. So we have to be created in, in terms of our ability to come up with strategies to reduce crime and disorder. All right. But it is a key concept because, like I said, I think uh, Sir Robert Peel uh, really, really had the idea that we need to come up with measurements. How are we going to determine if we're effective at what we're doing? Uh, how are we going to determine if a program is effective? And so there are things that we can do now to evaluate the success uh, or failure of different types of, of programs. All right, so that was, in fact, I, I think also a key principle or concept. Um, finally, uh, I just want to touch real briefly on some other um, forerunners in, in policing during this particular era, and they were talked about in some of our previous chapters. Um, but basically what Peel did is he continued the innovations of the Fielding brothers, and we'll talk about Henry and John here in just a minute, and others um, that 
were active uh, before Peel uh, in terms of trying to um, evaluate and come up with ways in which uh, to make communities safer. So um, first we'll talk about the Fielding Brothers. Uh, first we'll talk about Henry. Now Henry created what became known as the Bow Street Runners. Um, and the Bow Street Runners was a specially formed group of constables who were expected to run, hence runners, uh, to the aid of crime victims and in pursuit of criminals. So um, we began to see this whole concept of, of police being proactive, all right? You hear something, you respond to it. Um, you see somebody engaged in maybe some criminal behavior, you chase after them. So we, we began to see a concept where maybe our police should become a little bit more proactive, uh, try to prevent things, be more actively engaged in crime solving. Uh, Although responding to calls for help is sort of reactive, uh, but the whole idea of pursuing criminals is more of a proactive approach. So we began to see that whole idea of uh, the role, the philosophy of policing begin to develop uh, during this period of time in what Henry Fielding was uh, be beginning to, to create. Um, also the fact that you know, we began to look at, or he began to look at, the establishment of a professional full-time police force. He began to toy with that whole concept. It didn't quite take on at the time, but it was something that um, at the time would have been very innovative in terms of uh, pursuing an active police, professional uh, paid police organization. Patrick Kokuhan, um, he focused on law enforcement reform for over 25 years. He believed that the government should be responsible for regulating the conduct of the citizenry instead of neighborhood watch groups. So neighborhood watch groups probably tend to be more vigilante at the time. So his thinking was that uh, the government should be involved in regulating people's conduct, not just people in a specific geographical area or neighborhood. Uh, he, reduced to, he introduced the concept of crime prevention in 1797. He believed that police should gather information on criminal element, so keep track of them, know who they are. Um, he began to keep a register of known offenders, and so today we might call those rap sheets, all right? So we began, you know, he was beginning to think that there are certain elements of our society that have an inherent criminal nature, and that as police and law enforcement, we should, be, we should begin to identify these people and keep track of these people. And that was key. That was key uh, then, and it is key today, right? So our you know, this whole idea of rap sheets, this whole idea of keeping track of, you can take it to the level of identifying potential terrorists and a no travel list. Uh, those are the type of things that uh, he began to think about. And obviously we still incorporate to this very day. Keep your register of known offenders. Well, we, we've expanded that now to, for example, sex offenders. Um, and public and publish, that should be published, and publish a police gazette to assist the communication apprehension of wrongdoers. In other words, some level of communication that the public uh, can assist us on. Um, and so uh, depending on your community, you might have a monthly neighborhood watch um, uh, gazette or pamphlet put out by uh, the local police department that helps you identify where local crimes are occurring so you can be more vigilant in your activities. He was an advocate of paid, police, uh, paid professional policing and recruitment and management under central authority free of political interference. Uh, and this will become an issue in America. Uh, we'll be learning about this in the next couple of weeks in terms of uh, the political corruption and influence that occurred in policing in the United States. Um, so clearly he, he believed that we needed to be free of political interference. Uh, that didn't play out well for America in our initial stages. Um, and in the 1950s and 60s, you'll see how we began to try to get away from political interference, but the cost was in more isolated policing. Uh, he spurred police reform and introduced new solutions for maintaining public order in an area of urbanization and industrialization. So a lot of key stuff there. 
So take a look at this. Uh, these are some key innovative strategies, and hopefully they might be a benefit to you as you begin to research a paper, or uh, just in case you didn't understand what Sir Robert Peel was all about. See you later. Bye.